happen to We Don't Have Cookies, where possibilities are possible. Here's your host, Jason Marshall. What's up, guys? I've said it before, but September 30th is International Podcast Day. So September is International Podcast Month here at We Don't Have Cookies. Last week, we had guests on from New Zealand and Canada. This week, we have guests on from the UK, Canada, and New York, because it wouldn't be international if the U.S. wasn't included, right? So it's the guys from the Cave Crew Radio Show. I'm going to bring them in one at a time. First up is somebody everybody who's a regular listener should be familiar with from London, England. It's Choo Choo Stew. What's up, man? Hi, good evening. How are you doing? Doing good. What's going on with the podcast train? It's in the sidings at the moment, and uh, it's taken a sort of summer break, an extended summer break. So it may it may pop up its head again, like you know. But um, I'll uh, bring it back soon, as I will uh, totally from the UK. Yeah, that would be nice. I got another quick question. Well, I got a couple before we go on to the next guy, but it's been three months since you've been on the show. I was wondering why you've waited so long. Is it because I haven't asked you? Of course. I'm waiting for an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time you were on, man, it was great because you brought some fire against Mama Kate, and I don't think I've seen that side of you. I was really impressed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I did feel a bit bad afterwards, and I was thinking, oh, I didn't mean to sort of roast her. But <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I I came out of my corner totally fighting. I was well up for it. So, Oh, yeah, you knocked but, her out, man. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I'll have a link to that episode in the show notes, because that was one of my favorite things that we've done on this podcast. <laughs> well, next up is one of the founders of Cave Crew Radio, from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, it's DK. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having us us on the show, not just me. My first time, ladies and gentlemen, but great to be here. Thank you. I got to ask, what does DK stand for? I always just assumed your birth name was Donkey Kong. Were your parents big fans? Donkey Kong, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably, we call it worse, a lot worse than that, especially <laughs> by my wife. Um, but we won't get into that. I have my first name and my middle name are both actually K. So when I uh, when I first did internet radio podcasting way back when, a lot, a lot, I don't want to get into the whole story. I was double K was was my name for years, and uh, I don't know if one of my co-hosts at one one time just started calling me DK for short or whatever, and I, I just liked the ring of it, and it stuck. So here I am. DK is actually double K. Well, I think I speak for everybody by saying, "Thank God your last name isn't K." <laughs> I've had to, I've been accused of that before on certain shows, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I brought you on to sabotage you. I got a bone to pick with you. Oh, no. Why can't I ever comment on a Cave Crew Radio Facebook group post about my show? <laughs> you can share it anytime you want. I always share your shows. <laughs> For some reason, whenever you do... I can't comment to say, usually I comment and say, hey, thanks for sharing the show or whatnot. And for whatever reason, man, I never can on those posts. You, you must have uh, pissed off one of the other administrators. So I, I'll pass that over to Stu and probably Big B because you're making him go third. So <laughs> he, just probably, he just probably blocked you from all the comments. <laughs> I said, fuck you. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. You yeah. can edit it. <laughs> I must have because I can comment on any other post. And I noticed somebody commented on the last post that you put up. It was a, uh, it was some lady saying that she had to work on Labor Day, and I, I couldn't even reply to her reply. So I, <laughs> I don't know what's ah, going on. You've you've been muted. Yeah, you've been <laughs> muted on your own. Show. We don't like excess promotion. We'll do it for you, and then shut up and see if you get any <laughs> listeners. That's it. <laughs> I honestly don't know why. No, I don't know why. We'll have to check something. I guess. We're going to take a break. And uh, I think I've introduced everybody. So when we come back, I just wanted to see if Brian had a reaction. <laughs> Smoke coming out of his ears. I think he's chugging was, bourbon or something right I was now. patiently waiting my introduction. I was trying to be professional. <laughs> well, next up is the other founder of Cave Crew Radio from New York. It's Big B. How you doing, man? Good. What's going on? Oh, not much. For people who can't watch this, because this is an audio show, you guys do audio and video. 
Big yep. B gets his name from the B costume that he wears on Cave Crew Radio. You can see that on the YouTube versions. Uh, it's really <laughs> impressive. And, Wait, can, can I ask what's YouTube? <laughs> you know that yellow bee suit that you wear that's gonna oh, be yes. awesome every week i wear a yellow bee suit on uterb <laughs> and by the way yes i banned you because you were on our show like 27 weeks in a row and <laughs> we never asked once to be on your show so i've banned you from commenting well yes Stu. i think Stu's been on many times but for some reason we're not allowed Right, but you know we haven't been on. But yeah. you know he comes on. He come. He, we don't even ask him to come on anymore. He just shows up. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here. <laughs> I do think, Jason, before you go to your break, this is the first time I think anyone, other than when we've done Cave Crew, has had the three of us together. Oh wow! So I got like, an exclusive. Hey, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I eh, guess. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. 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 So if you have YouTube, you need to check it out. It's really cool to see him in the bee costume. He's got a segment called What's Everybody Buzzing About? It's mainly a uh, a men's fashion gossip segment, and uh, it's it's really good. Yeah, when he talks, it's just like smelling flowers in a quiet garden, folks. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> come, to, come to New York, and you'll find out what flowers in a garden actually smell like. <laughs> but he's also got another podcast called Metal Thunder Radio. Which I assume is about Foley artists. It's mimes doing Foley. <laughs> so they actually pretend to make noise. They don't actually make noise. Uh, no, it's Metal, Metal Thunder Radio on every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can hear it on cavecrewradio.com. Uh, we play metal from uh, all around the world. Uh, we play some songs. We talk in between. We have some fun. It's a good time. and We drink a lot. Well, the last time I was on Cave Crew Radio... I was bamboozled, hoodwinked, if you will. I was brought on the show just to be put on trial, and that was by Brian. That that was the that was the court of urine stench, Ellie. So I want to tell everybody you should go check out that episode. It was a lot of fun. I was put on trial. Uh, let's see what was it for? It was for murdering somebody. Uh, Stu found it in in his you know AKA Constable Carson. Um, you're not going to kid me. That's not used to. Uh, anyway, um, and he found it and sent it over. And yeah, we, we, I said, yeah, this is great. We could have some fun with this. And then we, we, we dove deep into the depravity that is Jason Marshall. Yes. <laughs> and you <laughs> actually, you actually gave us way more cool stories than, than, than what, <laughs> than what the story was going to dive into. So I'd say you put yourself into the fire pit on that one. <laughs> Absolutely. But you were ultimately found innocent. Yes. Yeah. And Just for was, those great stories. Exactly. And there were stories on that show that I haven't told on this podcast, so make sure you go check that out. We have a habit of drawing things out, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Dark side of people. We're going to take a quick break. This week's segments are a song by Mike Furman called That Wasn't Me and a BS fact from Beach, who will be my next guest this Thursday. But before we go, I want to quickly tell you about Boss Boxes. It's a monthly gaming subscription box. From console gaming to PC games, they have it all to boost your gaming experience. New merchandise from the biggest gaming brands delivered right to your door every month. Even the newest unique items in the gaming product line, they got you covered. So what are you waiting for? Go to bossboxes.store and enter the coupon code WDHC at checkout and get 10% off. I'm glad we're moving on, that we've both gotten over it. Our breakup was pretty bad there for a while. I look back and feel stupid It's stupid, I was mad I've been so Juvenile But now that's all over And peace has been made And there's just one little thing unsaid That needs to be Said So like That time a guy drove by And threw a sandwich at your head That was me Last Thursday night when the nightclub said They lost your coat that was me. Social security believes that you are dead. Thanks to me. When in the shower you found that tongue instead of soap. Well, that was me. That was me. I feel really good. The truth is coming out. I'm just glad we didn't let things go too far 
I may have spent $591.18 ruining your life, but I can't afford to let our friendship fall apart. Thank God that's all over. The pain's at an end, and we can be happy as friends. I think enough time has passed that we can look back and laugh. I know I can. The last three chapters of all your books that were all torn out. That was me who signed you up for the Scientology mailing list. That was me. Somebody peed in your Brita. And that's somebody who's me. And who wrote that email virus hoping it would get to you? And I'll bet it did. That was me. That was me. Someone told you I was sorry In a note left on your door That, that was my roommate And because of that, he's no one's roommate anymore I think we've learned a lot from this God knows I have Cause I've learned how to sign your name and plug your drain and make it rain and plant drugs and drug your plants and shrink your pants post videos of you throwing up in your hands and i was responsible for the events of september 11th 2008 the year somebody stuck a banana in your grandma's tailpipe and when i say tailpipe i'm really sorry and that time you thought that there was just one more stare That was me And when that guy hit your new boyfriend with a bat That was not me But he did it on my behalf For a fee That filled in crossword That was me Your new car was dirty Someone wrote wash me on the hood With a key And shot your dog Into space And that time you got drunk at the costume party And hooked up with that Japanese dude That never called you back think you'd actually do it that was me the old me g'day beach here from the bs pod and also newpodworldorder.com did you know in 2008 a man in montana used a toaster to make toast wait for it for his whole family. It's, I bet you this shit is happening all across the globe. Like, the crazy shit. Want to contact the show? Send an email to jason at wedonthavecookies.com or call 929-266-9342 and leave a voicemail. Before the show started, Stu sent me a message saying that he just got off work and needed some coffee. And once again, man, I wish you lived closer because... I got this whole section in my in my kitchen that is just nothing but coffee stuff. I got a Keurig, a French press, an espresso machine, a bean grinder, and like 20 different kinds of coffee. And ever since I moved into my house, nobody but me and my oldest daughter has had any coffee. I don't know if you get your uh, coffee from, from the petrol gas stations, you know, along the road, but I quite often stop either for a cup of tea or coffee different garages on the way home and they lock the garage yeah they, they, they lock the shop part so you've got to talk through this glass and then you sort of pass money through into the sliding drawer and they pull it back and then they put the change and push it forward so i was trying to buy a coffee from there and i had um it was two guys working in there and i don't think they spoke english I was almost like miming what I wanted. <laughs> and How do you order a coffee and mime? <laughs> did you do like my little teapot, like a little. Uh... <laughs> well, obviously you, you have to shout because <laughs> that helps. If you want, yeah, just when you don't speak English, shouting is the ultimate, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the universal language. <laughs> if you want milk uh, in it, do you have to squeeze your knuckles back and forth? Well, no, that was another thing. But I, I did actually have to get some milk from them as well and i just said i'll oh, give me a, like a couple of pints of milk 
and they looked at me blank. I said, some milk? Okay, milk. And then he finally came back with some milk, and it was like this stuff that was triple filtered something. It, was, it wasn't in your normal sort of bottle. I said, well, I haven't got any other milk. It was just a it was just nightmare. So I ended up taking it and brought it home. I don't know what the hell it was, but no one drank it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not have access to these things when you go in the gas station? Like when we go in gas stations here and they have shops, yeah. you got the guy behind the counter, but then you can go to the refrigerator, you can get your milk, you can it's self serve coffee. Everything the, the guy never comes out from behind the counter. No, it never comes no, but when it gets to a certain hour, they close the well, they just lock the door. So everything's done through then a, a window. So if you want something, sometimes they sort of they end up running around the shop holding stuff up. Is this what you mean? No. And then he picks <laughs> up the next item. Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? So there's there's no twenty four hour gas here, something I never knew about England. No, there's twenty no, there's twenty four hour um, gas stations, petrol stations. But the majority of them operate through a window. So they've got a whole shop. And, and in lots of cases like this one where I've been, it's uh, it's more or less a supermarket inside. It, it's so like the guy has to run around like, while you're miming to him because he can't really speak particularly good English. It's like that. trying to win a stuffed animal with one of those claws. <laughs> it, it's never the equivalent know. of going to a crack den when you have to knock somebody peers out a little <laughs> opening in the door. They stick out their dirty hand and give you shit. That's what the equivalent is, apparently. But it's like it's like a, they've got like a little trough with a drawer. So you've got a flat surface on the top that comes in and out. And as he pulls it, it exposes the trough. So he pushes the train, uh, the change through. And then drops your goodies underneath, you know, once once he's got your money. How big is this drawer that you're getting coffee through? Can you get it like a gallon of milk or something? <laughs> you wouldn't get a gallon of milk for it. but um. So what happens if you need a gallon of milk? What does he do? Unlock the door? Or, uh... We don't buy a gallon of milk for a start. Well, you have them in bags, so they just squeeze the bag through. <laughs> <laughs> It's us that have the bags, and yes, they would go through. <laughs> Bag them. <laughs> I'm sure regular listeners already know we've had this debate going on for probably the last month about bagged milk. These guys are where it all started. <laughs> it was on one of their shows, and me and Brian, we've never heard of bagged milk. Well, Brian has because he knows these guys. <laughs> but that's just not something that happens in the States. So I've been talking to other people in other countries, and uh, nobody in New Zealand has seen bagged milk, and nobody in Germany so far has seen bagged milk. I'm going to be talking to a buddy of mine in Australia here soon. I was hoping to have him on before this episode so we could just put it to rest. Well, we we had one shop, like a nationwide shop, that started doing them, and we invested in the jug that you had to buy the special jug. And in the lid, of the, the lid flaps up and attached to the lid is like a, a straw that's got like a speared pointed end. And there was a technique where you had to hold the Are lid. Are you of, fucked? You do not. You go to the dollar no, store, get a jug just, that the bag fits in, and you cut it with scissors and it pulls No, out. there was no cutting with scissors. There was a special technique. You put the bag in, but you held the top so it didn't fall all the way down to the bottom of the jug. And then as you're holding the milk bag, you slam the lid down and it basically spikes through to the bag. Now, I was never really allowed to do that after I've done it a couple of times because I had more milk out of the jug than was in the jug. And uh, This is, you get bagged milk. One, you have to buy the milk. Then you have to buy a jug. Then you have to get the instruction booklet on what to do. It's like fucking assembling furniture. Yeah. We could, we just go to the store, get a gallon of milk in a container, unscrew the cap and pour out milk. It doesn't take an hour and a half to, to drink milk. It's not as difficult as you're making it sound. You buy the jug once. It's like a dollar forty nine. It's 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 not it's not Robotron like he's talking about over there. No wonder bag milk failed in England. You put the bag in the in the in the thing and you cut it with a pair of scissors and it pours like any other thing. It's still- I guess anytime you have to use a sharp utensil to drink milk, you're doing something wrong. You shouldn't need to cut your milk. Yeah, no matter how simple you can make bagged milk, it's not as simple as just twisting a lid and pouring it. Exactly. <laughs> it's already gal- in a container. And who buys a gallon of milk? That's about eight pints. Well, Who's going to drink eight pints of milk? You have growing kids, right? Kids drink a yeah, lot of milk. People put points. milk in their cereal. People put milk in their pancakes. They're cooking. I don't know. I thought we got for a lot of milk. But you get, bloody hell. 
you get three bags of milk in a big bag. That's going to make you even laugh even more. You get three bags and one more big bag. I don't know why they do it that way. Yeah, I just uh, found that out on the last episode. Bulk <laughs> discount, so I guess. I don't know. Oh, my God. I, look, bags it's the only fucking... way that I can get milk unless I buy one of those cardboard uh, uh, containers. And you want to talk about messy. When you open those cardboard things, they never open properly. I know you got those in the States in the smaller sizes. And those cardboard ones, you got to pinch it back and then pull it forward, and then you open it, and it leaks all over the place. And uh, listen, I'd love to have jug milk, but it's what just year? not available. What year are you buying milk in a cardboard container? <laughs> I can do it still to this day. I, 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 I will tell you. I mean, they may do it in Michigan because you go to Michigan a lot. In New York, we don't sell milk in cardboard containers anymore. It's all in plastic jug shaped containers you got your gallon you got your half gallon you got a quart all sizes are in plastic jug shaped containers that with the screw top and the other thing my last guest she was from canada she said that she thinks it's to cut down on waste here like brian said all of our milk comes in a plastic jug and i know that the plastic jug is thicker than the bags but you have one bag with three bags in them i'm not sure how much waste you're cutting down (laughs) <laughs> I don't <laughs> I'm, I was never a milk man. I was never educated in this. Uh, we would have to, you'd have to go to the bag milk wiki uh, to get all the correct answers. I guess. I don't. And, and what, <laughs> what happens when you get to the end? Like, like we will just tip the whole jug over to get you know, every last drop. Do you, do you have to roll the bag up? No, to, it's like, not a toothpaste. Tu- no, it's not a tube, a toothpaste. The more you pour it, the gravity, the, the milk is more apt to fall out. If you, turn upside down a full bag but as it becomes empty you just drain the whole thing you pull the bag out you throw it away and you put a new bag in you smack it once on the counter and you cut it with the fucking scissors there you go milk again you shouldn't need scissors to drink milk there's something wrong with that what about if you had to milk your own cow now that would be (laughs) the true nightmare are you getting up half half ass in the morning you haven't had your coffee yet you realize you're out of milk and you're squeezing the shit in your eyes and stuff now that you're still not putting it in a bag you're putting it in a bucket if you hit the bucket. Um, have you got milkmen? Not anymore. We haven't had milkmen in 20 years. Like, what is this, 1957? No. Well, we have milkmen. <laughs> really? Uh, I what? used to do a milk round. You still oh, have milk. a queen, too. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a milk round. Can you imagine like, trying you to get leave them on someone's doorstep? Do you get giant bricks of dry ice to put in the ice box so we freeze things? <laughs> <laughs> Not have modern refrigeration, either? They salt their meat to keep it longer. <laughs> <laughs> they wring their clothes on on the on the, the on the ringer to wash them. They I'll make their you, own soap with lye. Did you know that <laughs> stew churns butter? <laughs> you guys have these electric milk. What they're called a milk float. It's like electric, uh, sometimes three wheeler that used to deliver the milk. Best job ever for a like a twelve year old boy or whatever, sort of hanging on the back of the milk float as it goes around the streets. I'm trying to picture that. Is it like a rickshaw? Like, what is it? Yeah, sort of like a big rickshaw, uh, like a sort of minivan type thing. But that, that only went about five mile an hour. So if you got stuck behind one, you were uh, pretty much knackered, like, you know. DK, I know you said that. Just kidding. But there actually is a milk bag wiki, and I'm on it right now. Oh, shit. There's a wiki for everything. <laughs> and, I can't yeah, there's, you, there's actually it. YouTube videos on it. <laughs> It's a DJ's best friend, Wiki. Oh, yeah, it's reliable. Don't you worry about it. But as reliable as the stories we report on on the show. <laughs> Everything in Wikipedia is true. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to actually find that when I typed it in. So when? So exactly when did this come about? And I'm pretty sure it doesn't say DK uh, is the chairman of the board of Bag Milk. <laughs> <laughs> Although we could add that. Yes. It looks like it was started in 1967 by Canada. Well, actually, that's just underneath the... There's actually other sections. That's the Canadian section. Down here is in other countries. And the earliest I see is is 1970 in Queensland, in Australia. There you go. See, they were way before us. You know the story of the three wise men, right? One bought frankincense, one brought myrrh, the other one brought whatever. The Canadian brought bag milk (laughs) (laughs) i will say that down towards the bottom there's a section that has benefits and drawbacks and the benefits is two sentences and the drawback is about uh five to six sentence paragraph (laughs) 
Uh, so, wait, so what's a benefit? I have to hear a benefit. I, I don't <laughs> see a drawback of the thing. This is the this is where we're squaring off here. It says the principal benefits of bag milk are economic for producers. It's easier to vary portion size when sealing the bags than it is for cartons, as well as lowering the cost of packaging. For consumers, bags typically allow for smaller portion sizes, reducing milk spoilage. The drawbacks go. when pouring the top of the bag and turnover, causing the milk to spill. Uh, let's see, milk bags cannot easily be sealed once opened. Sold. I wonder if there's like a class. Why would you sew a fucking milk bag shut? Just so, put do you like have a, a special class at school where they teach it. the kids how to do it? <laughs> so that everyone grows up knowing the, the right way. Look, I'm going to give yeah. you the greatest trick yeah. of all, folks, if you're ever in Canada. You slam the, 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 the jug on, on the counter so the bag goes all the way in. All that's left at the top is air and shit. You cut the little hole and it does not spill. Trust me. I, I, I've had five-year-olds do it. It's do you keep the scissors chained up to the jug like so they don't disappear? Because like you, scissors- you don't cut them every time you use the milk. You cut it once to open the fucking thing. <laughs> Even so, I mean, I had in my little office here, I had four pairs of scissors the other day and try to look for a pair today. They're gone. So I was thinking of chaining them up, but I wondered whether you would do that with the milk. You got to send me a picture of that gizmo where you had to push the top down every time you wanted a drink and with the, the straw or something. Or... Having to use scissors to drink milk in an extreme circumstance, you could slip and stab yourself in the neck with scissors. So in an extreme circumstance, the ultimate injury in drinking milk is death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not in Florida. And, no, I, and I shouldn't pick on Florida tonight. But anyway, you're, you're blowing away out of proportion. I, I, yes, a jug would probably be easier the more I uh, think about it. But am I going to go out and try and change the, uh, you know, the milk monopoly in Canada because I'd rather have a jug? No, I'll get one jug from the States. I'll bring it back. I'll clean it. And I will pour the bottled milk in there, a uh, bag milk in there, and I will just have my jug. But now, now I have a question. As you know, I always do. How much does a bag of milk cost? Three bags are about three forty nine. How much milk is in three bags? Like, uh, I'm is really that equivalent gonna... of a gallon, two gallons, three gallons? Uh, here's where I'm going to con- con- confuse you. It's a, it's a liter, and there are four point three three liters in a gallon. So, okay, so it's less than a gallon of less than a gallon. So, so three bags is probably a gallon jug. Okay, for three forty nine, whatever you said, right? Yeah. So that's if you do the convert the U.S. conversion, that's actually more expensive. Than where how we buy milk here already in the jug. Everything's more expensive here. It's your oil refineries that are that are failing down in Texas, and your gas is still half the price of ours. Figure that out. It hasn't even rained here in two months. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're missing something here, DK. I think you should start selling Cave Crew milk gallons in oh, Canada. God. <laughs> yeah, but you don't understand how we're taxed over here. Still, you'd understand because you're more a socialist country over there. But our taxes are terrible. But we have the free Medicare and the roads. We've talked about all this before. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's the trade-off of, of any socialist uh, economy. You're taxed to an umph degree, whereas we're not taxed as much, but we have to pay for all the services. Like, I'm not kidding you. On the TV today, that was an actual conversation that someone was having here. We have 20 oil refineries for whatever we have, 30 million people. You guys have 200 for 300 million people. Boy, it's about the same per capita if you work it out, right? Plus, our oil refineries are nowhere near any damage. They're in the center of Canada, in the center of North America. There's no damage there. It went out in Houston, and your gas is still half the price. Because we get our, we get our gas from the Middle East. We don't use our own gas. We export it, which is stupid. <laughs> if we used our own oil and refined our own gas, our gas prices would be next to nothing. And yet the battle that you pick, the mountain that you choose to climb on and stand on is bag milk. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why you're trying to change the subject, DK. (laughs) I'm I'm just saying, you know, I'm looking at oil, you know, that's really expensive. You're nickel and diamond me over a little bit of bag milk. I think this is why your country is in such a tailspin right now. (laughs) Before we change the subject, I do want to say that I talked to a man in Kentucky. His dad was the last person in that state to be arrested for cattle rustling, and he never heard of bag milk either. 
So it looks like he should have. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have been hung. <laughs> Hind and quartered, whatever he was. Before we end the show, why don't you guys let listeners know what they can expect on Cave Crew Radio and on Metal Thunder Radio? Uh, I'll let Big B go first because he was last last time. So go ahead with Metal Thunder. And, 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 and go ahead with Cave Crew as well. Well, for, first, uh, I'll talk about uh, Metal Thunder Radio again. Like I said, heard every Tuesday night live at 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can catch that on cavecrewradio.com. We play, uh, play metal from all around the world, uh, signed, unsigned, uh, in between the songs. We laugh. We have fun. We kill each other. We drink a lot, a real lot, and we just have a good time. So, yeah, every Tuesday night uh, live at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Go to cavecrewradio.com to check it out. Um, as far as Cave Crew goes, uh, we're back uh, for season four next week, next Thursday, uh, September 14th. Uh, again, live at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, more of the same uh, what you heard here, just uh, a lot of weird, weird news stories. Uh, we always have fun with uh, allotment news, which is a, a big topic <laughs> of ours. Which apparently, by the way, I, I've heard that there is an allotment newsletter coming out by about the end of September. So somewhere around episode six of season four, we should be back to the allotment again. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite parts of the show. Hopefully, yeah. And we've got a general election going on at the allotment mid-September, I think it is, mid to late September. You know, I, I, yeah, I was going to say when, when Big B was giving his little review, of my, you can pretty much copy and paste 80% of it. Uh, except we don't play the music. We insert, uh, you know, uh, stories about ourselves and our families that we think are funny, uh, news stories, well, you know, pop culture, whatever comes up. And we're going to try and push the envelope a little bit this year. You know, people like you stop by and hang out with us. And uh, who knows? We'll try and come up with some new segments and uh, just try and get stranger and stranger. And uh, uh, we figure the more we laugh, the more you're going to laugh along with us. So kifkaradio.com, 9 p.m. Thursdays, Eastern, live. On demand, iTunes, Stitcher, Cave Crew Radio, Twitter, Facebook. Go there now. And the guys will be on next month for Crossover <laughs> October. I'll be doing their podcast as well. So make sure you subscribe to both shows. You don't want to miss anything. And there might even be some special appearances by some people too. What the fuck is Crossover October? <laughs> I love when I find out about things on air. <laughs> is it the same as like cross-dressing October? Yeah. Is that what it is? That would be Stu's department, okay? Yeah. Choo-choo Sue. Yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be crossover episodes where I do somebody's podcast in exchange. They come on mine that week, too. So it's going to be a sure, lot of fun. Not? We're going to have a lot of guests and uh, looking forward to that. And Stu's going to be on later this month with another uh, Totally From UK Today extended edition. That's going to be a good time, too. Stu's always a good time. I, I think Stu's a good time. The more he doesn't prepare, the better his, <laughs> his show becomes. He just naturally leads into classics. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for being on the show. It was a lot of fun. And I want to thank everybody for downloading. Make sure you check out Cave Crew Radio. You can go to cavecrewradio.com. And like DK just said, you can find them on iTunes and a million other places. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we appreciate it. Tune in live next Thursday for the launch of Season 4 of Cave Crew Radio. Live next Thursday night, September 14th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, only on cavecrewradio.com. <laughs> listening tell your friends about the show and leave a review see you next time anytime you have to use a sharp utensil to drink milk you're doing something wrong